Hey everyone, I'm Tyler Wilde, and we are here at PAX East, and I just played Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, which was kind of a surprise, I didn't expect to be playing it. Uh, and I'm here talking to Sturt Jeffrey, who is director and uh, lead programmer on Rising Storm 2 at Antimatter Games. So tell us a bit about how you're taking what was really cool about Rising Storm, that asymmetrical, and Red Orchestra, the asymmetrical um, armies of, uh, of World War II and transferring that to Vietnam and, and the challenges of that. Uh, well, the, the obvious challenges here is that with the new era, this is something that hasn't been done in the RO franchise before. Uh, quite a lot of automatic weapons. And uh, when we first started you know, working on this game, we looked at it and we thought, these two teams are going to be so different, even more so than the US and the Japanese in Rising Storm 1. There's just no way we can go back to, to symmetrical gameplay. And after we got so many good props for the asymmetrical gameplay in Rising Storm 1, we thought, why not take it to its logical conclusion in the second one? With the game mode that you guys are playing here today, things are a little bit more balanced, a little bit more even. Uh, in some of the, the larger scale game modes that have come along later on, you will start to see a lot more asymmetry. But uh, the, the basic way to break it down is that the uh, US forces are fairly conventional. They use a lot of brute force, firepower. They're going to have airstrikes, napalm, artillery, things like that as their, their support. Whereas the Vietnamese forces have to rely a little bit more on stealth and guile. They've got a lot of traps that they can lay down and uh, get people with that. And some of their commander abilities are going to be a little different to uh, what you would have seen in RO2. They will be different to the American forces. How do you feel level design has changed from the previous games in the series to now to accommodate those automatic weapons and to accommodate how these soldiers fought? So uh, generally, what we've decided to go with is larger, more open levels, a lot wider, more room to flank. Uh, being that Vietnam was less about uh, you know, army on army combat and more about those squad level engagements, what we really wanted to do was to have it so that this game felt a lot more like you were having those squad engagements. And in order to do that, we had to increase the size of the battlefield to allow you to, to move around with your friends as squads and to, to you know, take the objectives as you go. So you will see larger, uh, larger levels. They will be more open. They will be wider. The engagement ranges will generally be longer. Uh, the sole exception to that is on this particular game mode you play at Skirmish. It is a, a close range competitive game mode for a small number of players, but uh, on our larger territories maps, you will see much longer engagement ranges to, to keep those automatic weapons in check. Yeah, and the big maps are really what uh, Rising Storm is known for. We did see in the trailer some vehicles. Are you able to talk a little bit about this kind of vehicles that we'll see? And. Uh, no, I can't talk about that just yet, but uh, watch this space. There will be some more information about that fairly soon. I saw. I know I saw a helicopter, so you can't deny that it's there. There, is, there absolutely are helicopters in the game. As far as what they do and uh, their, their function, you'll just have to wait and see. So let's talk a little about this, uh, the mode we actually played. You've talked about it already a bit. It's a smaller scale, kind of competitive. Is this something... Why include that in a game that's basically about large scale um, squad combat? Uh, two reasons. I mean, it, it, the first, as I alluded to before, is it is more about squads in Vietnam, less about well, one on one armies. And this particular game mode absolutely forces that. Because it is eight versus eight, you cannot get larger than your small squad size. And that sort of brings that into the fore. Uh, the second reason was that RO's sort of, it's always been crying out for a smaller, more competitive game mode. A few have been tried, uh, but most of the time they go back to the tried and true territories. For this time around, we thought, let's try something that's built for a competitive game mode from the beginning. Uh, and it also makes it a lot easier for us to develop and test. Smaller numbers, easier to keep in-house. Uh, what we're trying to keep things, you know, keep, keep the lid on things and test out the gunplay and all the rest of things like that. So that's why we've gone with this one. Uh, we went through a few iterations, but we feel that this is the, the best one to come out of that process. Regarding the bigger scale modes, can we expect to see any changes or new modes to the Red Orchestra Rising Storm series on the large scale maps? You may well do. <laughs> Again, that's something that uh, we'll be you know, we'll be talking about that soon. There will still definitely be territories on the, the large scale mode. That has not changed a great deal. There may be something else to talk about down the track. All right, well, thanks for talking to us. And do you have any sort of release window that you can talk about? Uh, when it's done. Uh, hopefully later this year. Okay, all right, thanks so much. My pleasure.